Hello and welcome back to the classes. My name is Shada. Today we'll be having a walkthrough on the manipulation of shear wall as per IS 13020-2016 version. So the very first thing is this entire sheet is divided into three parts. The very first part is the calculation part where all the formulas and everything is there. The second part is the, pitch, uh, the representation of the reinforcements, how they look. All right. And third part is all the clauses IS 13020 and IS 456. Okay. So I'll provide this IIT file to you. All right, this IIT file it will be provided in WhatsApp or in Telegram. I'll provide this. There are nearly 10 to 12 shear wall design examples. All right. Now, why this is a walkthrough, not a deep class, is simply because uh, you know in the one month back I had made a class asking students if they are interested to please comment slender columns. Nearly 419 people had watched that. Uh, I wanted to create you know in-depth classes with proper calculations and everything because uh, you know uh, technically heavy videos don't do really well on YouTube. Okay, so if anyone is genuinely interested to learn shear walls and use the Excel sheets and everything, please come over here. We have our uh, course ETAP safe and RCDC. And uh, if you come for the content part, if you go for our uh, uh, ETAPs part, right? There, there are nearly uh, two to two and a half hours worth of classes, residential, uh, commercial and apartment. You have to come down further down and you can see everything is about shear walls. Okay, so I have, I have done two hours of class just in manual design part. Okay, then I have shown how to use the Excel sheet completely start to finish and last but not the least how to use the Excel sheet in the context of ETAPs. Okay, so nearly three hours of content, three to three and a half hours of content is just on shear walls part. All right, so if anyone is interested, you can come in, refer this uh, Excel sheet from us and uh, not just this Excel sheet, there are other, other uh, offers also available. Like if I just take you back uh, to the very fun front page and you can see we have uh, for column reinforcement, we have Excel sheet beam reinforcement we have an excel sheet everything all of these are extra tools that can help you design the structures faster so if anyone is interested you can come in uh, download the app from the description link in description and whenever we have a shear wall like this and the earthquake is coming and hitting this shear wall okay the end zones of the shear wall will be stressed a lot because of why why they'll be stressed because they'll be moving to and fro okay their their job the job of the shear wall is to take care of the lateral loads as well as the actual loads Okay, so they'll be taking care of the lateral loads by being more stiff in that particular direction. All right, so our job is to step by step go with the design and then check for the boundary elements. These are basically called as the boundary elements, right? So the nine steps that we have, the very first step is the given section. Okay, whatever the inf information is there, whatever the loads are there, whatever the, the information is there, let me just take you over here. We have to assemble all that information in one single place. Okay. And once you have assembled that information in one single place, whatever these are actually unfactored loads. If you come to the IIT project, uh, uh, example 10 is what I'm referring to. Okay, these are all unfactored forces and they have actually decided what kind of combinations they want to use, right? Because they're doing manual calculations, they cannot do it for all the 30, 30 plus combinations that we have, right? So they have taken a combination and for that particular combination, they're carrying out the analysis part, right? Same thing I have done over here. All the information that is there, the height of the shear wall, as they have given it over here, the height of the shear wall. Then when it comes to the length of the shear wall, uh, the thickness, thickness I have changed. I have increased by 50. Uh, thickness of the shear wall, everything has been taken from the IID project only. Okay, so we first uh, take all the data, get the factored values out of the data. Then there's a classification of shear walls. Shear walls are broadly classified into three parts. I'll take you to the snapshots over here. There be, they can actually be squat walls, intermediate walls, and slender walls. And how do you decide that? For that, we have basically three criterias over here right so for the first one is that the thickness of the shear wall should be 150 mm or more than that okay second is the length to the thickness ratio should be four at least four then height if i can just zoom in yeah you can see now i hope yeah hw is the entirety of the height of the shear wall divided by the length of the shear wall okay so if this value is greater than two it will be a slender wall if it is less than two uh, and between greater than one, it will be intermediate. And if it is less than one, it will be a squat wall. All right. So in that video that I had showed you nearly of three hours, we have gone in depth with the code book and everything. And we have uh, done an in-depth analysis of the shear wall there. All right. So we decide what kind of shear wall we have. In, in our case, we have slender shear wall. Then based on the formulas that we have, we have to calculate for the shear reinforcement. Nothing you have to do on your own. All this is inputted. All right. Only the uh, yellow cells that you are seeing, you're supposed to input the values over there. All right. So you do that much and then you just come down further. Then we have to design for the distribution reinforcement of the shear wall. That is basically your, your, uh, this, this, this part, horizontal part and the vertical part of the reinforcement. Okay. Vertical and horizontal reinforcement is supposed to design and you'll design them based on the values that you have got from over here. 
all right so once you have designed them you have to in the third in the fourth step you will learn the horizontal and vertical reinforcement okay then you will check for the shear part also to satisfy the shear check also okay so if i just go over here and change the thickness to 200 for example i won't make any other change so i just make 200 as my thickness you can see that increase horizontal shear reinforcement is showing me that okay because it is failing all right so either increase the thickness or increase the dia right so each and every step is already linked and if i go into wrong anywhere it will definitely give you an answer all right so coming after the fourth step so first step is all the data you consolidate all the data second step you decide what kind of a shear, uh, wall it is why is this important because if it is slender wall if i take you back over here the formulas for calculating pt will change see for intermediate there is a different value for squad there is a different value for slender there is a different value so based on the they have done the you know uh what what can i say studies on this and then they have come up with this all these empirical formulas okay so if it is cylinder wall we have to use these values so that's why it's very important that we classify it in the second stage in the third stage whatever reinforcement data we have to uh, generate will generate that reinforcement data basically we are creating this mesh okay the horizontal mesh and the vertical mesh we are generating so once we have generated the horizontal and vertical mesh we have to check for the shear if it is passing in shear or failing and for that you have to come to is 456 if you come over here i have given you the uh, this one uh, snapshots over here okay again for the interpolation part also if you remember is456 we generally carry out interpolation the interpolation part also is available over here okay so it should be safe in shear once it is safe in shear and only then you will go further and check for the boundary element okay as i was saying that whenever we are dealing with the shear walls this edges will be most stressed why because they'll be swinging left and right right to and fro motion will be there and because of that moments what will end up happening is the the probability of failure is quite high in this particular zones so we have to check for the boundary element okay so what is that check what is that uh, re relevant clause again each and every clause almost 90 percent 95 percent of the clauses have been uh, you can find them over here okay so once everything is done for the shear check we come and check for the boundary element if the boundary element is not required you'll be having a mesh that's it but if a boundary element is required you'll be creating a column like structure in the in the edges okay very closely spaced uh, reinforcements you'll have which will, will be having higher dia compared to the other re reinforcements in the middle okay so once that is done if the boundary element is required then we have to calculate the moment of uh, resistance now what do i mean by that is see for example if this is my shear wall and let's say a value of 100 okay 100 is coming and hitting my shear wall moment okay it is generating 100, 100 moment so what is the capacity of a mid section to handle that moment i have to find out okay so for example if my midsection can handle up about 60 of that 100 incoming moment the remaining 40 should be handled by the uh, by the boundary element okay and we cannot divide by two okay our boundary element should be strong enough to withstand the entirety of it all right so if you come over here we have two set of cases for the moment of resistance okay if my moment of if my moment is 100 how much uh, the middle portion is able to resist that we have to determine so we have case a and case b so you have to just go for back calculation okay what is the what is the vertical reinforcement ratio as divided by tw into lw you have to do from here you calculate lambda pu by fck into tw again tw is the thickness lw is the length fck is the grade of concrete pu is the actual force everything is very simple all the all of them are empirical formulas so you, you just go back and put data like this you will eventually end up with xu by lw xu star by lw okay there are two cases the very first case is where xu by lw is less than xu star by lw and the second case is where xu star by lw is less than xu by lw and this less than one so based on these two cases the formulas will change formulas for what formulas for moment will change okay so again this mu you are saying no mu fck tw lw square will get multiplied over here so the moment formulas will definitely change that's why it's very important to understand this particular step again everything has been uh, you know i have been put everything over here you can come I just put those values and everything again 0.8 and 1.2 I have taken from this IIT project okay in ETAPS whatever the formula is there whatever the load combination is there you are supposed to take that particular load combination so again I have given an F condition over here so if it is passing like you go for the phase plus case if it is not working you will it will get us don't use this case it will show up over here then basically we get the moment out once we have the moment out we have to determine what is the uh, additional amount of moment which, which the boundary element has to resist 
So once you get that, we design the boundary element for that. And once the boundary element is uh, designed, we have to check for tension. And once the tension part is done, we have to go for the last and the final part. That is basically the reinforcement that you're supposed to provide. Ties that you're supposed to provide in the boundary element. Okay. All these clauses that you're seeing here, right? I have mentioned everything in blue. These clauses and these images that you're seeing, you can come and see it over here. Okay. Here you can come and see the same thing. Okay. Page number are mentioned over there. In the next right next to the places wherever we have used page numbers actually mentioned over there okay so if you're interested in, in learning the shear wall design and everything please come and check out our content over here etap safe and rcdc you can find the link in the description all the data will be available along with the shear wall uh, column design uh, beam design i'll give the links in the description for them also you can go and check out those exercises as well all right so with that i'll wind up this uh, walkthrough class for the uh, shear wall manual design and see you guys in the next class thank you